Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. We have a question here on the email from Jason. Uh, he wrote in, he says, uh, Hey Matt, I'm a new viewer. Thanks for all the valuable info. I have a question about the Canon EF 50mm F18 STM versus the Canon EFS 24 2.8 STM. Is it worth it to buy both of these lenses? As in, would there be enough differences in shooting video, mainly music video, to warrant buying both? If not, which one would you buy over the other and why? Thanks in advance for any time you take to answer this for me. I now use a Canon T3i with the kit lens, but may soon be upgrading to a T5i or T6i. I have a wish list of lenses I put together which I'll post below. The uh, Canon 10 18, Canon 50mm uh, STM, F18 STM, the Sigma 17 to 50 F28, the Canon uh, 24 STM, and the Sigma 50mm F14 Art. And then he's got six brackets, question mark, should a Cine lens be on this list? What I'd like to know is, are my choices good ones? And if so, could you rank my choices in the order in which you'd buy them? I mainly shoot music videos and artist stills, but would also like to start dabbling in short films and indie films. I'm looking to spend no more than about $1,000 right now. If these are good choices, would you get multiple lenses or start out with the Sigma 50mm art? Thanks again for any time you have to help me out. Carpe diem, Jason. Well, thanks for your question, Jason. Interesting, a lot to digest here for a second. Um, first of all, the 50 STM versus the 24 STM, the Canon versus the uh, Canon. There's, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say you should buy one over the other uh, for any other reason than what the field of view supplies and how you like to shoot. In other words, if you're more of a wide shooter and you're more comfortable with a wider lens, the 24 is the way to go for you there. If you like something a little closer, the 50 would be the way to go. The 50 is going to give you an approximate field of view of an 80, so very close to a traditional 85 millimeter portrait lens. The 24 is going to give you approximate field of view of a 36 mil, so very close to a 35 mil, which is a very popular um, street lens or general photography lens for a lot of people. So it just really, really depends on what your style is and what you're comfortable with. Uh, it certainly wouldn't hurt to have both of them in the bag. They're two different focal lengths. They're also two quite sharp lenses and relatively fast lenses. I mean, the 24 is a 2.8, and uh, which is fairly fast, especially for a wide. The 50 is an F1.8, so that's going to give you more light gathering ability, the ability to shoot in lower light situations than the 24 is. I don't think it would hurt to have both. What would I do? I would probably go with the 50 because I like that focal length. But it would also depend on where I was able to situate myself as a shooter in the uh, situation when you're shooting these music videos uh, and, and shooting what you're, you know, the subject you're shooting. Maybe the 50 would be too long, but I would need to know what my situation is in relative to my subject and what the room is like before I chose between those lenses. Now, the other thing to consider is you've got this list. Well, to rank them, I would definitely put out of everything you have there, I would take the top three. So that's the 10 to 18 Canon, the 50 mil F18 STM Canon, and the Sigma 17 to 50 F28 OS. The reason I do that is the Sigma gives you an amazing constant aperture zoom. It negates the need for the 24 millimeter 2.8, in my opinion. Then you've got a fast 50, which gives you very close to an 85 portrait lens. So there's my fast lens and my portrait lens. Allows me to separate my subject from my background, that shallow depth of field. Allows me to shoot in lower light. That's a great bargain at the price. Then the 10 to 18 gives me a wide angle. And that would be better than, in my opinion, the 24 if you're in a, needing a wide angle in a situation like me shooting music videos and you want to go wide. Also for vlogging. So those are the three I would buy first. And I wouldn't get the 24 because I'd be getting the 17 to 50 and the 10 to 18, both of which cover that range. And the 17 to 50 covers it at the same aperture, the 2.8. Then I throw in the 50 and I've got a fast, um, a fast prime, very sharp, and a portrait lens. The Sigma 50mm F1 uh, for art, that's a lot of money. It's more than all of those other lenses put together. So you really got to want to need that. Are you going to see a lot of difference? It's going to be sharper. It probably has a little bit nicer bouquet. It's a little bit faster, but those are all little bits. And I think in real world terms, you'd be better off getting the three lenses I talked about, the Sigma 17-50, to 50, the Canon 50, and the Canon 10-18, to 18, 
and then you'd be better off than spending that much money on a single prime. Later on, if your tastes and shooting habits develop that you do need the Sigma 50 F1.4, then you can consider it at that point. Maybe by then you've made the money to justify the purchase too, which is something to think about. A cinema, a cine lens, I'm not going to say don't, but for now I would still go with those first three, the 10 to 18, the 50, and the 17 to 50. Again, later on you might want to add a cine lens. I would start with those three. That's why I would, would, would start with those. Uh, that's my opinion. What do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Would you go with those three? Would you go with the 24 instead, the 2.8? Let us know what you would do and why. Is there another lens you'd throw in there? Let's help out Jason. Thanks for your question, Jason. Thanks for your feedback, folks. It's always nice to have you guys chiming in and helping out our viewers when they have questions. It gives them more to think about and to think out their purchase before they do it. Uh, and stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at ArtOfTheImage.com.